Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at Linux Lite version 5.0. Now Linux Lite do sponsor me through Patreon, but to be honest that doesn't necessarily change my opinion of the operating system, and it doesn't do them any favours at all for me to say it is perfect. But for what it is, I actually think it is a very good Linux distribution. Now it's aimed at new users coming across from Windows. It's based on the XFCE 4.14 desktop, and on one hand, you could immediately say, well, why not use Ubuntu? Well, Ubuntu is all fine and well if you know what you're doing, but uh, this comes with a few extras included. A few light specific applications, which allow you to make various tweaks to the operating system. Makes it a bit nicer. And this welcome screen here makes it all a bit nicer for new users. Let's start the website. So Firefox has been modified slightly. We have a custom search here. It's using Google, but yeah, it goes via linuxliteos.com. We've got links to help manual, support forums, and this Google search. The help manual is a very nice feature, and there is quite a lot in here. And I'll come on to this one later in the video. The support forums seem to be very good and nice and busy. It is certainly not a sparse wasteland. They've done a whole new website here, and it's, uh, I have to say, it is quite nice and fancy. Linux Lite is based on the long-term support release of Ubuntu, so that gives you three years of support with the XFCE desktop, with the underlying operating system being supported for five years. So in this release, we now have UFI supported out of the box. There's no hidden telemetry. Now I have to say that the creator, Jerry Besancon, really does support my view of tracking and that there really is no time and place for it, especially in the operating system. And it's good to see that he's declaring straight away here that the packages, Ubuntu report and popularity contest are not installed. So that's great. I have to say it's good to see an operating system that the creator shares my point of view. There's a variety of applications pre-installed on the operating system, and you'll notice that they're named by their function rather than the specific name of the application. So yeah, Media Player, well, I recognize that as VLC, but yeah, for a new user, why not make it nice and simple? Yes, I would like to open a word processor or a presentation or a spreadsheet. Simple. Let's take a look at the Settings Manager and the Light Applications. Now the Lite applications have been updated to use GTK3 and Python 3. And yeah, if you look at them, yeah, that's some basic functionality of adjusting some settings there on the desktop, some network shares. So yeah, it does have the ability to utilize Samba, which allows you to do a network connection to SMB clients. Well, to say it more simplistically, allows you to network with other Windows operating systems. There's a basic software installer, which includes a very cut down selection of applications. And when I say cut down, yeah, I'm not joking really, but it, uh, it pretty much gives you one choice of each application. So yeah, for a new user, this is a nice, tight, simple selection. Why would I need to know about all the different variety of uh, open source applications if I don't know which is best? Have someone else do the choices for me. Or Chrome browser, well, that is debatable, but then again, if you're coming across from Windows, then yeah, you probably would have used Chrome browser. And anyway, I don't think you'll actually be able to install the Chromium browser on here because there is because there is no support out of the box for Snap or Flatpak packages. Yes, you can install the package manager, but it's not here out of the box. So you're stuck with the dev based packages. I'm not going to go on too much about the package formats in this video, but uh, I will link to a video here in YouTube. The light tweaks is a nice touch. There is uh, quite a few changes you can make here that you may not necessarily think about. Clearing out cache from the system, installing newer kernels. So what I haven't mentioned, the kernel I have now is the Linux kernel version 5.7, but out of the box it came with the 5.4 kernel. 5.4 kernel, the long-term support kernel. Yeah, I've just gone for the newest one available. So that's all very easy to do if you want to install a new kernel or if you want to go and remove an old one. So yeah, let's just go through one of these tasks. So you pop in your sudo password and yeah, just select what you want to do. I'm not going to remove it right now, but uh, just wanted to point out it pretty much is that simple. Everything is categorized here nicely and we do have a grade or whether it is safe or whether you should proceed with caution because you're involving, well, involves altering system files. You don't have to do these changes, 
but you do have the option to, and you do have the option to do them very easily. Looking back at the other XFCE settings, we now have improved support for higher definition displays. So you can choose between different fractional scalings here. There's a native screensaver application. So I just have to enable it. And uh, you can only choose from a couple of different ones that are pre-installed here, but I think there are more that can be added. And I'm, I'm sure that Zubuntu had a few more pre-installed. I meant to mention about light software, although it's very basic, there's actually a full blown package manager on here with Synaptic. Oops, Synaptic Package Manager is just called Package Manager. Yeah, Synaptic Package Manager. You can install any of the wider range of applications that are available with the underlying Ubuntu 2004 operating system. Let's take a look at the welcome screen. Now I'm a huge fan of these for operating systems which are aimed more at new users. So you have the start here, yes, install the updates, drivers, set a restore point, language support, select a dark or light theme. This one kind of fooled me a bit initially because I was thinking, is it actually working? And, and actually, yes, it does. It just doesn't give you any feedback to say that it has worked. You just click a button and unless you've got another application open, you, you wouldn't know the difference. That, that's a nice, easy change you can make there. Go back to the top, you get to the home screen. Now what is missing here is the installation of new packages, but it turns out it's just further down the list. So yeah, the link to light software is further down that page. Oh, and the minimal system requirements. So any computer made in the last 10, 15 years. There's a hardware database that shows the configurations that people have had Linux Lite working on. Now I should say this is a manual effort to submit to, this is not automated in any way, and it's completely optional if you want to submit your hardware to the hardware database. And yeah, you can search here, so I'll just search for NVIDIA, just wanted to look for anything really. Actually I might bring back quite a selection, I should have said NVIDIA and something like 2080. Anyway, we get an idea, it's... Uh, this feature exists and shows different hardware configurations. That, that's nice. Uh, I don't know any other Linux distributions that do this. And the other links you have here are various support links and links to contribute or donate. Let's take a look at the help manual, the online help manual. Let's have a look at the contents and start. Yeah, so there's various uh, categories here. And I want to look across at software. Uh, let's go back to yeah, the categories on the left hand side. I was looking at under the installation of software, we have the Linux equivalents or equivalents of Windows programs. So that's nice. It's quite a nice list to see here. I know these things exist on the internet, but you've got them all here in one place. And for a Linux distribution that is aimed at new users from Windows. Under the tutorials, and now, ah, this is where I have to say this was a, a bit of a, a letdown, really. Well, it's something that could be improved, let's say. So let's go across the firewall. Basic configuration of setting up the firewall on the system, because there is a, an application here, firewall, and it uses firewall D, which is a bit different to the default uh, UFW that uh, Ubuntu would use, the uncomplicated firewall. Instead, we have firewall D. Now this doesn't necessarily work out of the box because firewall D is not enabled. Now uh, I've made the argument that for the average home user you, you don't necessarily need a firewall in Linux. And I've got a whole video on that uh, and I'll link to it. But yeah, if you want to set up the firewall on here, you have to do some terminal commands. Now I was thinking, what, why can't these be done in the application? Or why can't there be something in one of the light tweaks that does this for you? Yeah, and that's just one of my suggestions, and you know, it's by me saying some of these things that uh, developers might think of that. See, I'm not just saying it's all perfect, I'm just saying there are some things that can be improved. You might notice here on the light widget, it does say about the firewall status, it does say being enabled or disabled. Oh, and incidentally, this is another of these things that uh, is a little bit of a faff to enable. It's all pre-installed, but you just have to enable it for the auto-run programs which I had to look in the help guide for. But overall, it wasn't necessarily too complicated, but yeah, it just involved that little bit of an effort of looking at the help manual, which not necessarily everyone will do, 
and they may find that and they may completely miss out on these features. But other than that, Linux Lite has run perfectly well. That's no surprise really, I had no problems with the underlying XFCE desktop, uh, and that is a very slow develop desktop. Just means it's slow and stable though. Not necessarily full of brand new features. But I think Linux Lite certainly does set a nice standard for new users, and there is something here for everyone really. The number of pre-installed applications is not that large really that an advanced user would think, oh, I'm going to have to remove all this stuff. And some of these light tweaks are quite interesting and nice to use. Well, that was a look at Linux Lite version 5.0. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later.